Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo, and it is time for week two in the Global Battle Association. This week, your Victorian Shadows are going to be up against Tom and his San Jose Sharpedos. If you aren't familiar with Tom, we've fought him before. Uh, I really enjoy facing him. Um, he Number one, his just his attitude when it comes to battling is just fun. He's a fun opponent to face. Um, so his, uh, in, his information will be in the description. And thank you, Skyrender, for recording these matches for me. And you guys will also notice a nice new overlay that uh, Bill Standish made. So he made the overlay and he made the team logo. So I will continue going back to him for all the good work. Uh, we will face Tom later on in the season. So there will not be a dedicated team builder for this matchup just because I don't want to necessarily reveal everything if I can reuse any of these sets. Um, I will say we have a Trick Room, Life Orb Executor, um, nice Scarf Tar, uh, nice and bulky Araquanid, um, and a little bit more standard on the Alakazam and the Rotom, and on the Lycanroc, which is our Z user as well. So starting off, I do get the lead matchup nailed here. I was really worried that he would lead with um, Caesar, but um, I could also see him leading with uh, his Landorus, which unless he had the Flying EMZ, uh, he could not one hit KO my Executor. So that means I get Trick Room up immediately. And if he did lead with Landorus, the Frisk would allow me to see which Z move he had too. So I figure no drawback lead here with my Executor. Uh, he does make a great play and go into Diancie as I go for Draco Meteor. I figured even if he went into Diancie, I could immediately KO him with Energy Ball unless he was like Max Bedef. But he has Protect, which just sucks because this wastes this wastes half of my Trick Room here just against the Diancie, and he is a really bulky build because I don't get the KO on him even with the Max Special Attack Energy Ball. That was a little bit annoying to see because now he can just Protect again instead of me having an additional Trick Room turn to hit something with on his team. So knowing that he's going to protect, we're going to swap out into my Araquanid. If he only had um, special type moves, Araquanid can take those pretty well, especially because of how bulky I made this variant here. Uh, but he actually has Diamond Storm, which is going to really sting Araquanid. The, the physical moves Araquanid does not take nearly as well. That's okay, I do take it. And um, he's at a low enough uh, range where Liquidation is going to finish him even after the defense boost. So Diancie is down and he doesn't have Stealth Rocks, so either his uh, Landorus or his Komodo have to be his Stealth Rocks at this point. He goes on out in the Swallow and I can't risk this being, um, I, I really didn't want to give him any momentum with U-Turn. And so I just stayed in and went for Liquidation, but from the Boom Burst damage, I know he's not Specs. And so at this point I was thinking, is he some type of weird mix set or is he Scarf or he could also be, uh, with that range of damage, he could have been Silk Scarf or something different, but I knew he wasn't Specs because Specs would have finished off my Araquanid from that range. Uh, he doesn't know that I have a Scarf Tyranitar yet, so I go out here to hopefully make him think that I'm expecting him to be Specs and to just, you know, U-turn or something like that. Um, but I didn't know that he was Scarf at that point either, and so uh, if he had like Hidden Power Fighting or something, I was thinking, oh, maybe I could catch him off guard here. But he just makes a safe play and goes out to his Rotom Wash form. From here, I don't have my Araquan anymore. I could have gone directly out into my um, Alolan Executor, but I was worried that he would have um, something that Alolan Executor didn't resist necessarily. And so I went out into Alakazam expecting him to either go for the Hydro Pump or the Volt Switch. And I knew after Mega Evolving I could live another one of either of those two moves. Um, we do know that he's not Scarf because of the Leftovers recovery, so that's that's at least one good thing here. Uh, I just go for Psychic because at this point my win condition is the Lycanroc. And I need damage on Rotom in order for Lycanroc to be that win condition. So after a Psychic, Rotom is easily in range for anything from Lycanroc, so that's fantastic. We are running Adamant Lycanroc this week, just because Adamant Lycanroc with max attack can one-hit KO uh, Landorus. He brings in his Swallow here, and I knew after the Sandstorm damage that he was Scarfed, but I didn't have a good swap into his Swallow. Uh, and it's important that I keep Tyranitar and Lycanroc pretty healthy, so I just let my Alakazam go down there, 
knowing, okay, I'm going to get a chance here to set up another trick room. But I figured setting up a trick room was too obvious because he could just hard swap out into his Caesar and finish me off with a bullet punch. And so I just went straight for the flamethrower and he just stays in and goes for hydro pump. So he might have called my flamethrower there. I could have just gone straight for energy ball and finished off the Rotom. Uh, I don't know quite how to feel about how Executor went this match. Like I definitely felt like it would have given him some problems, but protect on Diancy just really wasted my early, uh, early game momentum there. Um, with me only like Executor didn't even get a KO and really I, he should have gotten at least two KOs with that set. Uh, figuring that he knows that I'm scarfed at this point, I just go into my um, Tyranitar and finish off the Rotom. And that's another place where if I had just finished off the Rotom with my Executor, I wouldn't have had to make that play either. But that's fine. We're going to go out to Rotom here because this is the easiest switch into Caesar that I have. And unfortunately this lets in his Landorus. But if number one, I can make him spend his Z move here, that's excellent. Number two, he should be threatened out by my Lycanroc afterwards because of the prevalence of my own Z move. Even if he's, I think he has to be max HP with a lot of defensive investment to live a um, my Splinter Storm shards from Lycanroc. So I figured I could force him out afterwards with that. Uh, he does just go straight for his Z move, which is Continental Crush. And, oh, the damage, the damage. That's okay though. Rotom, you did you did your job in blocking the the Caesar there. Uh, Lycan Rock is in, and it is time to set up because he's gonna swap out, right? 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 No, he just stays in and kills me with Earthquake, and that's good game. Um, I definitely understand his thinking there and not wanting to let my Lycan Rock set up, but if I had finished off the um, if I had finished the like the Landorus off right there with my Lycan Rock. With Scarf Tyranitar in the back, that made things relatively easy to clean up, bar the Caesar. So that's what my thinking was, at least, in as far as why he, sh I expected him to swap out. I I'm not looking forward to facing Tom again because I feel like I didn't get a lot of information out of this battle. Like he played it very, very cleanly and pretty safely, honestly. And I just didn't expect him to play the way that he did, given our previous matchups. So, that's going to be the end of this battle. We lose again in the week two of the GBA. And I still enjoyed this match because I got to bring Executor. And that was fun. Uh, so, for the rematch there, just expect us to be, to be bringing the pain for Tom there. So, guys, thanks so much for watching this matchup. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. See you later.